So you might have heard that OpenAI has finally released its, well, what lots of people are calling its Google search competitor, but it's uh, using ChatGPT for search. So this is to plus users. If you haven't had a chance to play with this yet, um, I'm going to walk you through uh, quick scenarios here, nothing, nothing deep. I will say this. Knowing that most lawyers generally go to Google first for a lot of their legal research, and yes, ultimately might go into one of the databases to actually pull citations and all that, what I'm about to show you uh, might, just might, challenge the notion out there that we should absolutely not be using chat GPT for legal research. Now, I'm going to say, as I always say, as a lawyer, we're responsible for our work product. So regardless of where you're getting your cases and your analysis and your citations, you've got to double check it or triple check it all the time. Obviously, that we're not like leaving that obligation anywhere. That being said, what I'm going to show you, I think, is a hell of a lot easier to do legal research, getting off of Go. And the beautiful thing is you're going to get click-through sources with chat gpt so here we go um let's just uh get rid of this side panel and you can see if you haven't been to chat gpt in a while uh it's prompting you right down here um you're going to see that it's going to ask you to do the chrome extension which is going to change your search whenever you do a search in chrome to chat gpt i'm not going to do that i'm not ready for doing that yet but you click this search the web button and it changes to an active search. So I tested this out. I'm just gonna bring up um, two screens. So there's the Google search screen. And here on the right is uh, the same search. So I did prompt Google. I wouldn't have prompted Google the way I prompt chat GPT. And yes, you have to, as always, interact with these things differently. But for the sake of this experiment, I just copied and pasted the same prompt. So on the right hand side, I started my first prompt with asking what is Palantir stock price? Now I did this at 932 this morning. And you can see on the right, this is updated to 1047 because that's when I'm recording this. What I will tell you is that this was inaccurate. Uh, at 932, the price was above $42. So I'm not sure if this was pulling it from the close yesterday or after hours trading at some point, but it said as of 932, um, it was 41.56 and that was inaccurate. So um, I don't know if I can take you back here. Let me see if I can take you back here to uh, 930. Look, let's see, 935. Yeah, I mean, at 930, it was at 41.96, okay? And it only went up from there. You can see my cursor over here. So, I, okay, there's one knock against the search. Not sure where it's going. Okay, then the next uh, one, next prompt was, I was just simply asking, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, go Bills. Um, what are the odds for the next Buffalo Bills game? That's all I gave it. Well, okay, so it knows that it plays the Dolphins at one o'clock on Saturday, or on Sunday rather, and it gives me the current odds. Okay, and again, notice the click throughs here. So I can, you know, basically pull up and there's a bunch of different search results here and um, that I can sort of dig deeper into. Uh, over here, again, I phrased it as a question in Google, generally wouldn't do that. And what I got back was a typical Google result. Notice it's not giving me the odds. This is not how Google's designed. It's not meant to answer questions. It's meant to give you sources to answer your questions. Um, so I could click through and obviously get those, but wanted to sort of show that. So this response is a heck of a lot more useful. Now, is it true? Let's go back to the Palantir one. Would I have relied on that? I, it depends on what you're using these things for. But I wanted to contrast this. This was inaccurate. This one is accurate. Okay. Again, you may say, well, that's the reason why I'd never use ChatGPT. But over here in Google, you're going to find a whole host of different things you got to click through. And I guarantee... Um, it's not going to be as easy. Now, you could say stock price. Well, okay, that's real time uh, to some extent. I mean, there's always, you know, a lag. Um, just it depends on your use case. And again, these aren't going, you're not going here to get the definitive final hand on Bible, I swear it's the truth answer. You're usually going just to kind of stay informed, start a research thread or something like that. Okay. So I wanted to challenge this in a legal research contest, content. 
Contest? Yeah, both in <laughs> the content and contest. And I said, all right, can you give me a list of all U.S. court cases pending that are related to copyright issues associated with training data used for LLMs and AI model training? And this is the response that I got. It's a pretty good list, okay? And yes, now did it, it relied on Wikipedia? Again, do we think Wikipedia is always true? No, but we use it to get off go. We use it as a starting point to drill down to. So I can click through and basically uh, it gives me this open AI page and I'm sure somewhere in here is a list of those. Um, so you can see here, list of additional resources if you want as well to click through to see yeah, i've got uh you know law firm websites tech company articles or tech uh, journal articles so on and so forth so a really good start um same over here let me go back because that was same question okay and this is a search result so i get something from baker hostetler i get you know ropes and gray crow and mooring but again, is this all the list? So this is a case tracker. So I went there and clicked on this. You got to scroll down and it gives you, uh, you know, a current list, uh, current as of, I don't know when. Um, so I don't know how real time this is. So I did a quick comparison and there's these two lists are different. There is overlap. So I went back and I said, are there any others? OK, and it did. It found some more uh cases so it just you have to prompt this again there's no real way to do that in google i would just be going okay let me look at this list then all right let me go down here and see so it's just an efficiency uh play at this point but these lists there is slight divergence in them but again you go into westlaw and lexus and look for this you're going to get a high degree of cases, a, a very long list that you're going to have to decipher and go through. So, again, getting off go and thinking about this from legal research, um, it's more useful today than it was without search. That is ChatGPT. Um, so then I wanted to ask ChatGPT, are there any cases that, while directly on point with this issue, might still be relevant? I meant to say not directly on point. Um, and it interpreted that. Uh, see, are there any cases that while directly on point with this issue? I meant to say not. It, it discerned that while not directly. Sometimes even our own errors it will adjust for. And it gave me three cases. So, again, not perfect, not a replacement. Show me any legal research tool that is and any human user that knows how to use that legal research tool that is 100% perfect and accurate all the time. All I wanted to demonstrate is the new search function and that today with the search function, ChatGPT got a lot more useful. I will say a lot more safe as well. But again, do not rely on it. Always rely on yourself to review it. So if you have a plus subscription, uh, check it out. Um, let me know your thoughts.